welcome to this Spring Hope lesson study for this morning. And we're in lesson number three, the everlasting covenant. And today's topic, covenant and the gospel. And with us this morning to go through the day's study are uh, Elders Jarvis and Tyrell. Gentlemen, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Elder Jarvis, you will lead us out in prayer. And Elder Tyrell, you will read our memory text. Let us bow our heads. Loving Father, we are so thankful for your goodness towards us in opening our eyes to see yet another day. We thank you for your love and your mercies. At this time, we ask that you will forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from unrighteousness. And open our minds as we look into your word. Give us clarity of thought. Make our hearts receptible to that which your spirit will reveal unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And the memory text, taken from Genesis 17 verse 7, says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Amen. Okay. Elder, covenant and the gospel. Elder Hyrule, covenant. What's a covenant? <laughs> a covenant is an agreement. Rather, she has an enforceable agreement between two parties. And it's this, in this context, it's between God and his people, where each side promises to do or to perform something, and the other side agrees. Okay, fair enough. Elder Jarvis, let's talk about the gospel in the context of the lesson. The gospel. Uh, well, it's interesting to note that there is this descriptive word attached, which says everlasting. Mm -hmm. And for many of us, it sometimes will cause a little bit of a challenge because in our day, we know the everlasting gospel has a lot to do with fearing God and doing what he says and identifying some intricate things here at the end of time. And maybe we, we might wonder how, how does this gospel translate in previous times? But the reality is the gospel is just this, the good news of Jesus and what he has done for us what he is going to do and the promises that he has made. And we can even go all the way back to the very beginning in Genesis chapter three and verse 15, where he promises that he will crush the head of the serpent and the serpent shall only bruise his heel. So it, it, really, it really is an everlasting gospel. God's salvific plan to save man is the gospel. Amen. And the elder Tyro, the covenant and the gospel, what the covenant has to do with the gospel. Essentially, the covenant and the gospel share some distinct similarities. The covenant that God made with his people and the, the gospel that Jesus brought to us the gospel forms that connection, if you will, that glue that keeps us fastened or bound to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We would note that Jesus promises, he promises us salvation on condition that we are faithful. Mm -hmm. We cannot earn it. There's nothing we can do 
to earn it. Money cannot buy it. All Jesus is asking is that we be faithful and continue to serve him. So could, the, could I just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Could I just add something? I, something just came apparent to me. When we, when we look at the gospel, we see that the gospel, we say that the gospel is the good news of Jesus. That is yes. what, what, what he has offered to us, the salvation that he has given, something that we can't earn nor work for. And the covenant is an agreement. So uh, uh, on the flip side, we agree to accept what Jesus is giving for free and believe that it is true. And Jesus offers us something that we can't buy, neither work for. Uh, uh, so the, the, the gospel is, is, is that gift that is offered and the covenant is contingent on us accepting and believing and, you know, being totally enthralled by what God is doing for us. And Elder, Elder Javid, since you opened the door, let me just walk right in and ask you this question. Because even from the start, the central theme of the covenant, we're told, was the gospel, but mm -hmm. salvation by faith and faith alone enlighten us. Well, the thing is, the, if we can imagine someone decides to gift you with a brand new house, they come to you and they give you the key and says the house is located in such and such a place. Go and possess it. Until you accept that what is being told to you is true and you accept that these keys really are for that house that was promised to you, you will never get it, even if you have the key. Correct. Until you make the journey to that specific place where this structure stands, you will never be able to possess that house, even though you have the keys to it. It will stay right there and no one will live in that house because you have the key and the doors won't open without you. So really, truly looking at what God has done for us to this, this salvific process, this covenant process, because that's really what it is. We agree to accept, to believe what Jesus is doing, what he has done, the price that he has paid to ransom us back from the position that we were in. And when we accept it, believing that there's nothing we can do to earn that gift, it is ours, it becomes ours because it is only by faith. And God then honors my faith and I become a recipient. I become a child of his. It Because there is nothing in this particular walk that can happen unless faith is firmly attached. Amen. And that's really the, the, key, the key, the glue to the whole process. Amen. Elder Carol, let me bring you in here. Before we go into the Abrahamic covenant, was there ever time before when we see God making a covenant with his people or with anybody prior to this Abrahamic covenant that we're going to go into? Yes, we think, of, we think of Noah's experience. God, God told Noah, well, at the time, the folks had become so wicked. And so God sought out a faithful man and he found that faith in Noah. 
and he gave Noah some instructions and told him for the first time it would rain on the earth and it would send a flood. And asked Noah to take the necessary precautions to build an ark and gave him instructions. And at the, at the appropriate time, only Noah and his family went into the ark. But one thing I find significant here, the animals were not led into the ark. Well, actually, we didn't see any, any physical leading into the ark. Mm -hmm. The animals were directed by God to enter the ark. So I see that promise or that covenant, if you will, between God and Noah. And Noah followed and obeyed God by faith. Amen. Elder Jab, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Here's God speaking to Abraham. Mm -hmm. He wasn't Abraham yet. And Sarah was Sarai. Not Sarah, but, but Elder, God says, Look, get you out of your country and from your kindred, from your father's house, you know, and go to a land where I will show you. And God is making a promise here, Look, I'm going to make you a great nation. I will bless you. And, you know, I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to curse those who curse you. And Abraham accepted by faith. Ella, this wasn't no mean faith. Abraham was not a young man. To get up and to leave your country and your kingdom and to move and to move and a place where I will show you. Abraham didn't know where he was going. I mean, that might sound like an adventure for a young man. But for an old man, Abraham is 75 years. I mean, tell us, what caused Abraham to, to believe God? What was it about Abraham that he would have believed God and to move? I find that Abraham's actions were unique from the very beginning. Amen. Because if if someone calls you and say, "Listen, I have I have something for you to do. I want you to go to this place this time," you you would likely be able and willing to go. However, God said to Abraham, "Get out of your father's house and out of your country, and go to somewhere that you don't know. Go to a land." And I will show you when you're, when, uh, maybe it's on your journey or when you get there, I'll tell you where it is. But G God is asking Abraham to do something quite unusual. And the fact is, it must be that God knew that Abraham was already a man of faith That's right. to call him to do something so stupendous. Because Abraham left. He packed his stuff and he left to go on a journey to a destination that he didn't know yet. Right. And it is evident of the sort of faith that we need to be able to exercise when it comes to God and his, the things of God in believing, I want to say blindly, but I want to use that kind of tongue on cheek because Whenever you're following God, you are never blind. <laughs> because it doesn't matter whether you're going without sight or not. 
when you go with God, you always have the best director. Amen. And we can trust whatever he says and whatever he does. And it, yes. it is in doing so that we exercise that measure of faith that is placed within us. And as we see God lead and his promises come to fruition and our faith grows and develops and gets larger and larger and bigger and bigger and we can exercise this trust and total confidence in God so that we can declare, even like the, the he, three Hebrews, listen, whatever it takes, I'm going to trust God even if I lose my life, if God save us from this fiery furnace, so be it. But even now, even if it doesn't, we are going to obey him and serve him no matter what. And it, it is really just the trust and faith that we need to develop as individuals, which makes these Bible stories sometimes seem so unreal. Uh, are, are these things really possible? But God has placed within us everything necessary. It's just for us to exercise that muscle of faith and it will grow and develop and get strengthened. Amen. Amen. And Sarah, I can see you're trying to, to put in a word here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the opportunity to come in here. Faith is that is that contract, if you will, if I should use that term, that bond, that glue between God's believers and him. When God made promise, you can see that that connection and that relationship being repeated throughout, throughout scriptures. And, and you, you know, <laughs> you look at Abraham's following God's direction. And when God told Abraham, listen, as Elizabeth said, get out of your familiar area. You, as it were, you, you're born here, you're raised here, you're not displaced, like the palm of your hand, as we say. And I want, I'm going to send you to a place where you don't know. <laughs> humanly speaking, humanly speaking, the, the average person would say, oh no, I, I, I am accustomed to where I am. I, I, I know this place. I know the people. This is my culture. I'm not leaving. But Abraham obeyed God by faith. If God says it, you do it without murmur, without complaining. And that was the measure of Abraham's faith. Amen. Okay, Elder Cyril, Genesis chapter 15, 5 to 18. And the word says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, Whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds, Divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, an hour of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward, 
shall they come out of out of great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the amorites is not yet full and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces and in the same day the lord made a covenant with, with abraham saying on thy seed have i given this land from the river of egypt unto the great river the euphrates the river euphrates um elder God is very clear. He doesn't leave us in the dark. God makes his promises. They are clear. It is for us to obey. Fulfillment of God's promise is contingent on us. keeping our end of the bargain because God always keeps his end of the bargain the covenant but in chapter 2 God is saying to Abraham look no for certain that your seed is you you will be a stranger in a strange land God is saying you're going to serve them you're going to be afflicted by them God is saying that hey you're going to be in captivity for 400 years God went on to say look and that nation whom they shall serve will I judge afterward and in all of this Abraham is still faithful. Abraham still obeys. Elder, what what can we learn from this? What can we learn from this? I mean, God. I mean, God is letting Abraham know what is to come, and it it wasn't all. Danny wasn't all good news. You're gonna make me a great nation, my seed. But yet still, I mean, my seed are gonna go through this. Abraham was still faithful. What can you say? I have come to love certain sections of scripture, and this is one of them. because in 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 this time god is god is doing what he does he said to the the, the prophet ezekiel to it's god sent a challenge show yourself if you are god by telling that which is to come tell declare what shall be and we will know that you are god because we don't know that only god is able to do that and he he said to the, the the prophet isaiah that from ancient times he would declare the things that are not yet done and this is what god is doing in this passage here in genesis chapter 15 he is telling abraham that in about is going to be about 50 years or so your seed shall be a stranger in a land and then they would become slaves but after the 400 years i am going to bring them out with a mighty hand and outstretched arm and i am going to do it but it's going to take that long because of this 
because of my righteousness, because of my justice, I am going to allow for time for the iniquity of the Amorites to be filled up. God is giving them, God gave the inhabitants of the land that he wanted to give to Abraham almost 450 years to clean up their act, to get it right with him before he brought judgment upon them. And God sought to work through Abraham. Yes, it seemed as if these children of Abraham were going through this rough patch of slavery. Right? However, God had them in a holding pattern. And it was the enemy who sought to disrupt God's play in, in causing them to become slaves in Egypt because God doesn't will any evil on anyone. But the devil always seeks to subvert God's plan. However, he can't stop it. And God worked his way, his wonderful way, as he always does. And he brought them out at the pointed time when the cup of iniquity was full for the Amorites. And God says it's time for judgment to be passed on them. And Israel should come and overthrow them and take them out of the land. It's really great evidence that God is who he say he is. And in doing so, he's able to tell the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. And it is just God's wonderful way. And these are, these, these are passages of scripture that really buoy me up and get me excited because when God does his thing, it's just totally amazing to me. And I realize that God can be trusted no matter what. And the Cyrus, yep. we see that the gospel is being revealed through this covenant promise. And Abraham faith being counted for righteousness. Okay. Okay. Abraham, as we said earlier, believed God. And as we see back in Genesis 15, he said his faith was counted to him for righteousness as it were. The faith that Abraham demonstrated, that he displayed, was second to none, if you will. And, and uh, it came out of a sound and concrete and unshakable belief that God will be there and God will do what he says he will do. And so because there was no doubt in Abraham's mind about following God's direction, the Bible tells us that that's, that faith, the strength of that faith was the right way to go and hence it was counted to him for righteousness. And Elder Taro, still, still at you, we see in, in, if we can recall in Genesis 22, at Mount Moriah with Abraham, I mean, that express expression of, of faith, that expression of obedience, can we, can you just compare that to to God offering up his own son. You see the salvation plan here even, even from the very beginning, even before Christ? Well, you, you see him. God sent his son for a specific purpose to, to pay the price of our sins, to offer us the salvation that no one else could have offered. What God is saying here, now even as Abraham believed God, right? even as he believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness, but I'll go on. He said, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children 
of, of Abraham. Okay? So if we have that unshakable, that, that, that convincing and the conviction that God will do what he has promised to do, all right, we too will enjoy the, the promise that God has made to Abraham because we too are spiritual descendants of Abraham. And as the, the, the Bible reminds us, it will be counted to us in our generations. What we need to do is maintain a connection by God through faith. How does the covenant idea of the law and the gospel together fit so perfectly with the three angels' message, messages of Revelation 14, God's final warning message to the world? Uh, I, I believe that we, uh, as we look down through time, we will recognize that there is a consistent pattern that uh, God has highlighted. And we look at what Paul says in Hebrews 11, which we call the, uh, the Hall of Faith. And it's it, one phrase is consistent. It by faith. Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, by faith. All of these men acted by faith. They believed God, obeyed him, and followed according to his will. Now, down in our time, we are going to be facing some unique challenges. And because of those unique challenges, God sent that it was necessary to remind his people at the end of time and to bring people to a place of surety where they can know where they're supposed to stand. Because at the end of time, there will be a system that is seeking to cause men and women by force on the pain of death and to be discriminated against so that they can dishonor God. And this system is going to forcibly seek to do these things. And persons need to know exactly where God is standing. So God gave the gospel, the good news, how to be saved at the end of time. And God is saying that we need to fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. And God is saying to us that we need to go back to the original and follow the prescription that has already been established to do what he has said based on what he has said and not anyone else. So that it is necessary that when the issue of the mark of the beast comes to play, and as one, one person suggested, that the mimicking of the strategies at that time is now in our environment, where persons are so concerned about force and so forth and so forth. However, the issues now are not calling us to dishonor God. But at that time, that's what it will be, to do away with the word of God and God's requirements by law. And God is saying, I want you to know where to stand, how to stand, and what to stand on. And God, this is the good news. God has given us the blueprint for salvation in the three angels' message at here in Revelation 14. God spoke to Abram, Abram, listen, Abram, obey, hear. God is speaking to us again in Revelation. Pay God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment. He has come and worship him that made heaven and the earth, the sun and the sea and the fountains of water. Element. I like to look at the verse, the prior verse, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every, every nation 
and kindred and talented people. And we notice here, this is an all-inclusive statement. The gospel is intended for every single human being, without exception. And, and the more we examine the scripture and adhere to these teachings, right, by faith, of course, the more we are preparing ourselves for when Christ comes. Irrespective of your color, your creed, your nationality, or what have you, this message is for you. Matters not who you are, where you come from, where you're going. This everlasting gospel is for every human being, every man, woman, and child. If you want to be saved, we have no choice but to obey this gospel. Your closing pitch as to your take from the lesson. What is your takeaway from this morning? Lesson, the covenant, and the gospel. I just go first. I believe that understanding what God wants from us, and he places it in a simple context of a contract. I will save you. Just obey me. Mm -hmm. And I agree. God has promised us on condition that we follow him. We follow him totally and completely. We hear the term all the time, oh, Salvation is free. It is not free. The price has been paid on our behalf. That's right. And so, as we follow, by faith and faith alone, salvation could, would, and should be ours. I thank you for stopping by this morning as we go through the lesson. And we have learned that the gospel covenant is for all of us. To Gentile doesn't matter. It is for us and it is upon obedience to the command of God. God always keeps his promises. Amen. It is we who fail to obey his word and to keep our end of the bargain. Amen. I want to thank you for dropping by this morning. I pray that we will continue to study his word and to understand that it is upon obedience that we are going to gain our place in the heavenly kingdom. And so I want to say to us, as we go out, as we move about this morning, let us remember that COVID is real. Our numbers are going up our death and our positive numbers are going up. So what I have to say this morning is to be mindful, continue to adhere to the protocols, wear a mask, wear it correctly, maintain our social distancing and sanitize. The life you save not only could be yours, but someone you love. Have a blessed day. Go out and be the day.